What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because we're bringing to you an Armed Dragon deck profile. Now Pile Armed Dragon was just announced to be released in the new Hidden Arsenal set which changes this deck completely. There's so many combos you can do and today I actually have a special guest. We're bringing up Spirado today to show off this deck profile as well as some combos because Honestly, he's the Arm Dragon King. He also just hit a thousand subscribers. So if you guys want to go check him out and go support his channel, that would be greatly appreciated. He deserves a lot of love. So you guys can go check him out. A link will be at the top of the description below. But yeah, he's bringing you guys Armed Dragon. This deck is really, really fun. This deck is really, really cool. And if you're a GX fan, just like I am, this is something I think you'll love. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. And now onto the deck profile and, and the combos. What's going on YouTube? Sparato here. Huge thanks to Spanko for allowing me to upload on his channel really means a lot. Today I'm going to be showcasing to you guys what Arm Dragon Thunders can do with the new support card coming out in Hidden Arsenal Chapter 1. But first, if you aren't already subscribed, make sure you subscribe to Spanko. He makes a lot of awesome Yu-Gi-Oh content, he's just a really chill guy overall. If you end up enjoying the video, make sure you click the like button, and also maybe consider checking out my channel, it should be linked in the description below. But without further ado, let's get right into this. So let's talk about what Arm Dragons exactly did before the new support card, because this shows you how much better the deck is now. So initially their game plan was just very linear. It was just to level up into level five to seven and 10. And they would do this by sending monsters from your hand to grave. That should already be like a huge red flag. But the armed dragons, when you sent them to grave with another dragon's effect, they will search for a new card. And what you were supposed to do with the blazing vortex support was search cards to discard with your armed dragon so that eventually you can end on your thunder level 10. You're gonna see me do that right now. I discarded my Arm Dragon level 5 to search for my 7, and then I discarded my 7 to search for Lightning, which brings me back my level 3. And then I'm just going to discard again to go into level 10, and then I'm going to draw one card, and that is literally going to be my end board. Obviously there's a lot of problems with this. You're ending on one monster that's not even as strong as like a Dragoon, or an Ultimate Conductor Tyranno, or a DPE. It's a very okay monster, it's pretty good, but it needs to be alongside other interruptions, and it's just not. And you're also wasting the potential of your really good Arm Dragon Thunder search effects just to summon this guy. So basically what this deck needed is a way to abuse the search effects, a way to get Thunder level 10 out faster, and a way to get more bodies on the board, and that's exactly what this new card is going to do for the deck. The new card that I'm talking about is going to be a Secret Rare promo in Hidden Arsenal Chapter 1. And that's Pile Arm Dragon. So Pile Arm Dragon is going to special summon himself out by sending a Wind Dragon or a level 7 or higher dragon from your hand to grave. And then it's going to boost the attack of a monster by targeting the monster as cost and sending an Arm Dragon from deck to grave as cost. You might be wondering how this makes the deck better. So I'm going to showcase to you this combo that's a two card combo. You just need Pile Arm Dragon and then either Arm Dragon Thunder level 5 or Arm Dragon Thunder level 7. All these cards are extremely searchable in the deck, so you'll be able to do this quite often. And you'll also need one card to discard, so I just filled my hand with Ghost Ogres. So we're going to start off by activating Pile's effect, sending level 5 to Grave. Now this is going to trigger level 5 after special summoning the Pile Arm Dragon. And this is going to be able to search for any level 5 or higher wind dragon. And I'm going to search Tempest, because this card can get you into any dragon in the game. Next you're going to use Pile's second effect. And we don't care about the attack boost. We're just doing this to send Thunder level 7 from deck to grave as cost. That is huge. That means this can't get Imperm, this can't get Veilard. You can just go ahead and send your level 7 to grave, and that'll trigger your Thunder level 7's effect. Now, if you already have a Wind Monster in hand, you want to search Arm Dragon Lightning to give you some protection and recursion. But I want to show you the rawest combo, so I'm just going to go ahead and search for another Wind Monster to discard with Tempest. I'm going to pick Arm Dragon Thunder level 3, because I haven't used his effect yet. Then we're going to use Tempest effect to discard the level 3 and himself, adding a black metal dragon from deck to hand. This will also trigger the thunder level 3's effect in grave to draw one card, so we get a little bit of card advantage from this. Now we can normal summon the black metal dragon. We're going to link into a striker dragon. You're going to go chain link 1 black metal, chain link 2 striker dragon, so that way your black metal dragon cannot be ash blossomed, making this combo a little bit resilient. So we're going to add the boot sector launch to our hand. If you are playing the Rocket Engine, this is a great extender. And then we're going to summon or search the Red Eyes Darkness Mel Dragon. Summon him out by banishing the Striker Dragon because I like having Pile and Grave. And then I'm going to use this effect to cheat out the Arm Dragon Thunder level 7 from our graveyard. We can link these two off into a Heratic Seals. And then we can discard once to get our Arm Dragon Thunder level 10 out directly from our deck. 
So this is a much faster way of getting Arm Dragon Thunder level 10 out, and it also gets you Heratic Seals out, and you have four cards in hand. These cards could be extenders, they could be hand traps, but either way you have a lot more interruption than the previous combo, and the previous combo died to one ash. With this, you're at least getting your Heratic Seals, and let's say you got hand trapped in the middle of this, you could go into like Romulus, search Dragon's Ravine, and then like keep on comboing off if you wanted to. So this is a really solid combo, and it's just so much better than what we had to do before. I'm going to show you one of our best combos with this deck. In this instance, I'm going to be using Pile, Level 5, and Black Metal. There's a whole bunch of different combinations that can make this, and these are all very searchable cards, so this actually happens a lot of the time. But basically, you just need to have access to the original combo and then one extender. So I'm going to activate Pile, Send 5. Because I don't need to search a dragon with Tempest, I'm actually going to search for Armagram. Dragoonity Armagram is just a better extender than Tempest because it has really good effects. And it's a level 10 monster, so I can go into rank 10s next turn. The you know, Normal Summon, the Black Metal, Activate Pile, second effect, sending the Thunder level 7 just like last time. Because, again, we aren't going to discard with uh, Tempest, I'm going to just search for Arm Dragon Lightning to give us some protection and some recursion. Then I'm going to Link Summon the Black Metal Dragon into a Striker Dragon. Chain Link 1 Black Metal, Chain Link 2 Strikers, same thing as last time. Then we're going to Special Summon the Red MD, cheat out the level 7 from our graveyard, just like last time again. And then we're going to go into Romulus this time rather than the Heratic Seals. And we're going to add Dragon's Ravine. So again, I really like Romulus in this deck because it gets you access to the Rocket Engine by itself. You could also play like a Dragoonity Engine if you wanted to with like Dragoonity Glow. Or you could even play the Divine Lance for an Extender if you wanted to. This not only heightens your combo ceiling, but it also just makes your deck a lot more resilient. Because as long as you have two Dragons, you could go into this at any time. So anyways, I'm going to activate the Dragon's Ravine, sending the Armogram to Grave. Because we don't care if it's in Grave or not. And then I'm going to send Absruder from my deck to Grave. This is going to trigger the Absurder effect to search for a Rocket Tracer. Another thing I really like about the Rocket package is that drawing Absurder, drawing Rocket Tracer is not bad. Even drawing Boot Sector Launch, while not optimal, it's not that bad. Like, as long as you're not drawing Recharger, the engine is always live and it's just going to help you extend. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and activate Armagram's effect to Special Summon himself from the Grave by banishing two dragons. Special Summon, and then Link Summon into Heratic Seals, getting our first interruption. If our opponent was greedy and holding on with Nibiru, this is kind of like their last point of being able to Nibiru us, because if they do, it's going to use its effect to tribute the Heratic Seals, making it so I special summon a dragon directly from my deck, and they definitely don't want that. Then I can go ahead and activate Boot Sector Launch that we naturally search in our combo to special summon the Rocket Tracer. Rocket Tracer is going to pop the Boot Sector Launch, and we're going to get a Rocket Recharger from our deck. And then we can go ahead and Synchro Summon into a Boreload Savage Dragon for two Boral Counters because we got Romulus in the graveyard. So we're going to get the Omni Negate before we get into Thunder level 10, which is kind of my goal. I want to be as safe as possible with this deck. And I'm going to Special Summon the Arm Dragon Thunder level 10. Then after that, you can activate your Arm Dragon Lightning and use its effect to target the level 10 and recur an Arm Dragon from your graveyard. I like picking the Arm Dragon Thunder level 7 because it gets you anything in the archetype. So now we can talk about our end board. We got an Omni Negate. We got a Quick Effect Pop. This guy's also very beefy under Arm Dragon Lightning because it gives him protection. So very annoying monster to out. And then we have the Quick Effect Bounce with Seals and then being able to summon a dragon directly from our deck during our opponent's turn. Now I'm going to show you what I like to do with this board. So I'm going to use Heratic Seals to bounce one of my opponent's cards. I have to bounce my own card because obviously there is no opponent in a test hand. So I'm just going to bounce back a random card to trigger its effect to special summon a Kawaki Myra Drago from my deck. This card is absolutely insane. It's going to lock you and your opponent out of special summoning light and dark monsters, which is like 90% of the game. It is zero defense, however, because of Heratic Seals. So when your opponent tries to swing over it, you're just going to activate your Thunder level 10 effect, discarding the level 7, popping their card, then searching for a really good follow-up play. Um, if you had the correct levels in your grave, you could search for something like level 10 white, who's a free special summon. He's really, really good because he can pop something during the start of the damage step, and he's just a big, beefy boy, so he's going to be able to put the pressure on your opponent. But we don't have the correct level, so I'm going to go for another pile arm dragon instead. So when it goes back to our turn, I can activate the arm dragon lightning, bring back an arm dragon from my graveyard. I'm just going to pick up the level 5, and then I can use pile arm dragon's effect to send the level 5, and then that will trigger the search for level 5 to search for something like Tempest. So you just have like all the follow-up in the world. 
And then something cool too, if you wanted to go for like level 10 white or something, you can go into Armagram, banishing just two dragons, like whatever. And then you can target your own Kowaki Myra Drago and negate its effect so you can go into light and dark monsters. So if you wanted to do like Boral Sword, Axis Code Talker, level 10 white, whatever you wanted to do, you can always turn your Kowaki Myra Drago off. But for the most part, you don't even need it because you have so many wind monsters in the deck. And that's just kind of the name of the game with this deck. You just want to make enough interruptions to survive, and then you want to have the most godly follow-up on that turn three. It also means this deck is actually really good at going second, especially with the main deck boss monsters. It doesn't care about Scythe too, too much. And just Pile Arm Dragon can play through Floodgates really well. Like if there's a window on the other side of the field, you can boost your attack, swing over it, even if they have Alistair in hand. Like there's just so many good things about this deck that I like. It just has enough difference from regular Dragon Link that I feel like there are actual reasons to playing this. Plus it's just really, really fun. So one of the inherent problems that decks have that require multiple cards to combo is that they brick a lot. This deck, however, is relatively consistent because you have really broken cards like Small World that you can take advantage of. So Small World essentially turns any card you want into Pile Arm Dragon or whatever Arm Dragon Thunder you need because we only play a ton of dragons with lots of different stats, but they're still dragons. And you can also play a hand trap line that complements this. So I'm gonna activate Small World, banishing my Thunder level seven because obviously we can't do anything with two Thunder level sevens. So I can banish a Black Metal, I can banish level 10 White, I can even banish Droll Knockbird because they only have one thing in common with Thunder level 7. So let's do Black Metal Dragon because the only thing they have in common is that they're dragons. And then the third target doesn't have to have any rules with the first target if that makes any sense. So it just has to have one thing in common and nothing else with the second target just like we did with the first and the second one. So we can add a card with the exact same stats as Thunder level 7 even though that's the first card we banished. So I'm going to add a Pile Arm Dragon to my hand and now I can successfully combo and play Yu-Gi-Oh! So here's the deck list that I'm personally using. I'm playing three Arm Dragon Thunder level three, five, and seven because they're all your searchers and you want to draw them with Pile Arm Dragon to combo. I play one Thunder level 10 because he's a bit of a brick and he's not super important to the deck. He's just a really good turn one play that you have access to. And he's also really good under the Scythe Lock. Three copies of Pile Arm Dragon, of course, it's literally the best card in the deck. One copy of level 10 white to help break boards. Three copies of Black Metal Dragon, it's just the best normal summon in the deck. One copy of Red Eyes Darkness Metal to search off the Black Metal. Tempest is the glue that holds his deck together. One Dragoonity Armagram, because it's a really good searchable extender that helps break boards. We got the Rocket Engine with Absurder Dragon, Rocket Tracer, Rocket Recharger, Boot Sector Launch, and Dragon Ravine. This gives your deck a lot of durability, it heightens the combo ceiling, and I know a lot of people are probably itching to throw three Quick Launch, three Tracers, and all that because they're so used to playing regular Dragon Link. But trust me, it does not help the deck at all. You will brick like crazy. You only need this linear engine because even if you hard draw any of these, as long as it's not Rocket Recharger specifically, you still have pretty much full combo and you actually get access to it easier if you don't have to use your extra deck to get to it. One Kwaki Myro Drago because it's a win button. For the six free spaces, I decided to play the most impactful hand traps in the game. I think Spanko would agree with me on this that Droll and Ghost Ogre are just too cracked. Droll just hard punishes anyone playing the Adventure Token Engine. Same thing with Ghost Ogre. And Ghost Ogre is so good that you could draw multiples of this and even though it's a hard once per turn, you can pop the Adventure Token Package and then you can just pop an Opelousa afterwards. It's actually crazy. These also help as Small World Bridges because this one can banish level 10 white to search for a dragon and then Droll and Lockbird is a wind attribute monster so you can kind of put the two and two together. I play three copies of Small World because it makes a deck like ultra hyper consistent. Then I'm on double prosperity. I know a lot of people will yell at me to play three, but you really don't want to play three because it's not a good card to open. You only want to open it if your hand is literal dog water because it conflicts with your OTK ability and it conflicts with Arm Dragon Thunder level three's effect to draw a card and this deck really needs the hand advantage. So you only use this if you run out of plays or you just straight up bricked. I play one of each of the Arm Dragon spells. I play one Flash because it's a searchable quick launch. It's not really a good starter anymore. That's why I'm not running three because what are you going to do with this in pile? Literally nothing. I play one Blitz because you can summon another pile from your deck by targeting a pile Arm Dragon. You're locked into dragons, but it's fine because literally your entire deck is a dragon deck. But this gets you access into some really good rank seven monsters. 
Arm Dragon Lightning is the best spell in this deck because it gives you recursion and protection for your level 10. For the extra deck, I play Boreload Savage because the doi. I play Draco Berserker because it helps break boards. Scarlight also breaks boards, but it's mostly for when Judge calls time. Then one really interesting card from Donna Majesty, Volo Furnigus, the Darkest Dragon Doom Rider. So this card's actually really interesting because it's just a quick effect pop as long as you have dragons as material. So kind of the same thing as under level 10, just with less protection and it's a one-time use. But this is helpful if you want to hold on to that card advantage and you don't want to discard to make Thunder level 10. Or maybe you drew the level 10 and you don't want to just like discard your entire hand. This is just a quick effect pop that you can get access to with Arm Dragon Blitz, which Pile Arm Dragon can search with by sending Thunder level 7 directly from deck to grave. So that's really nice to have. One Flare Metal, so if we're locked into dragons, we can burn our opponent out of the game, even though we can't go into Gustav. Speaking of Gustav, we play Gustav and Lieb for the OTK package. If you aren't able to kill with this because of Prosperity or something, you can make a 4 Material Zeus instead, which is really strong. One Striker Dragon to get our play started. One Romulus to extend and search Dragon's Ravine. One Quad Boral if we need to get a Link in the graveyard. Two Heretic Seals because this is just the best Dragon extra deck monster in the entire game. And then one Phoenix and one Cerberus to help break boards. Well, that's going to wrap things up for today's video. Again, thank you Spanko for having me. It was a lot of fun making this video for you. And if you find yourself interested in this deck, I have a longer in-depth guide and profile on my channel. So make sure you check that out. I'm going to head out now, guys. Peace. So that is it for the deck profile. I hope you guys did enjoy. I don't want to say a big shout out to Sperato and a big thank you to him. Make sure to go check out his channel if you guys do have the opportunity because he's a great guy, great content creator, and he's really good at his arm dragon stuff. So I hope you guys did enjoy. Thank you Sparato again for being on the channel and guest uploading. And with that, Spanko signing out. Peace.